what's going on guys if you're finding my channel for the first time my name is very unique William Bootsy Blanding um, I've been at this entrepreneur game for quite some time now um, it's been challenging but the alternative has been worse. Um, one of the reasons why I left the retail world is for the same reason most people were quitting their jobs during the pandemic is time freedom. That's one of the reasons why a lot of people originally joined Uber and Lyft. They wanted time freedom. I remember hearing about uh, bus drivers and people in the transportation world. When they jumped on board Uber, they did it because they wanted their time to the point where they still wanted to work. People want to work, but they want, they don't want to have to go to their boss and ask, oh, can I go to the bathroom? Oh, my kid's sick. I got to go pick him up from school early. People want that time freedom. We all want it. And unfortunately, the average job, unless you work from home, does not provide that time freedom that most of us want. I just had a uh, private ride passenger um, that was rambling on about how she hates her job. She's in the medical field. Uh, she works for a group home. Ironic, that's what I did my last job. Um, she's doing the same thing and she's just going on and on and on about she's not happy She's really depressed um, Because she doesn't have time freedom And she gets paid better Than I did when I was in that field. I think I was only getting like 15 16 an hour She's getting like 20 I believe $21 an hour and it's still Not enough money because she doesn't have time freedom the only way, in my opinion, that you're going to get time freedom, and this goes for Uber and Lyft too, is you're going to have to start your own business. Now, in the Uber and Lyft case, technically, we're independent contractors, but we still feel like we have a boss, which is the app, the algorithm, because... It doesn't give us the other capabilities of being an independent contractor. Like I can't set my own schedule. I can set my own schedule, but I can't set my own prices. Um, I got to deal with their bells and whistles to even make an extra bonus here and there. Um, and it's just not. You just don't feel like you're independent enough. The only other way to offset that is you gotta basically become a private driver like a limousine driver and make your own money but in the case of this passenger who works at a group home she can get licensed and work for herself but she doesn't have the knowledge to figure this stuff out on her own you guys gotta build skills outside of what you do in your day-to-day -day job. I have more skills now than I ever had in the past. As time goes on, I build more and more skills because I'm getting older. So when you're getting older, you need more skills because I'm aged out on most jobs. I'm only 53, but the fact that I've been not employed by somebody for so many years hinders me from getting a regular job. Now I'm sure because of my record is squeaky clean, there's certain jobs I can apply for even as a 53-year-old man, and I would get those jobs. So 
I understand that, but what am I lacking? Time, freedom. If something happens to my daughter or my granddaughter, I don't want to go ask my boss to leave. I just want to leave. And you can only do that when you are your own boss. Now, some of you probably think, well, we all can't be our own boss. Yes, you can. And you can build it while you have a job. I'm not telling you to quit your job. I didn't tell this girl to quit her job. I said, well, while you're working, you need to start building skills. Because she, she's not med cert yet. She needs to get med cert. I didn't go that route, but being med cert, you have the ability to get more opportunities and become self-employed if you want to do that. She has to build skills in order to do something different. You know? Now, she joked, oh, I'm just going to go be a stripper. She's not even qualified to be a stripper. Stripper, you got to have some some kind of sex appeal which she's lacking you gotta have some type of skill to go up and down these poles like a lot of women don't understand it takes skill even that takes skill so even joking that and a lot of people don't even understand what OnlyFans a lot of people particularly women think that because there's so many women on OnlyFans making money that I can do it too. A lot of women will get on OnlyFans and not make a dime. Because, of, believe it or not, it takes a skill. You still got to market yourself. You still got to advertise yourself. And you're competing with millions of other women. Millions of other women. There's no guarantee that you're going to be able to get out there and compete with these other women unless you build up your marketing skills. You know? So, we all have to build skills. I've got several digital products that I'm no pressure, I'm not pressuring you guys to buy because I have enough affiliate offers that I promote that I don't even want a, a business that pressures people into doing stuff they don't want to do. I don't want to do that. I'm not here to do that. I'm here to give you choices. And regardless, regardless of what field you want to be in or what you want to do the rest of your life, you have to build skills. You know, I don't want to pretend I have the answers for everybody. I'm just giving you my interpretation of what you need to get out here and make money outside of what you're currently doing at your job. I consider Uber and Lyft my job, but my skill is online marketing. If I were to get deactivated from both apps tomorrow, I still would be able to do something online just building my marketing skills. Over time, it's only going to get better. The content's going to get better. The AI tools I use are going to get better. Pretty soon, guys, I'm just going to be able to go up to something and be like, it's going to be a, a device either in your phone or a standalone device that you're just going to be able to talk to and it's already going to have access it's already going to be linked to all your social media platforms and you're simply going to be able to like you know what uh, let's just call it Aubrey named after my granddaughter Aubrey I need help to create a video to promote my upcoming program and it's literally going to be able to do the video portion the uh, the words going across the screen the thumbnail it's all going to be AI generated 
voiceover can be my voice. Yes, they have the capability now where I could clone my own voice. And I don't even have to be in the videos in the future. Which is probably my next way to going because I like hearing my own voice, but I don't necessarily want to be behind the camera. So you can literally have stock footage, have your own voice, and a girl that I used to watch, um, she did a uh, rideshare content, and she was doing really well, better than my nice guy driver channel. She was getting a lot of views, and she just stopped and disappeared because making content, although it's easy, it's, it's time consuming. It takes work. It takes ideas to come up with the next video. People don't understand that this is also a hobby that could turn into a full-time job. Content creation. And even though the market's saturated, where it seems like everybody's doing content creation, that is still the best way to market any business because you're reaching a broader audience. I'll give you a little bit of my history. Back in 98, after leaving my former mentor, who was a complete narcissist, he really was. I know women call a lot of men narcissists, but this dude really was a narcissist. And he wonders why we never became close, close friends. At one point, could I call him my best friend? Um, I would say briefly. But he was a complete, utter narcissist. And he was so bad, he didn't even realize he was a narcissist. After leaving him, I went off and created my own brick and mortar. This was actual brick and mortar cell phone store. But this is back in 98. I'm pretty sure YouTube wasn't even around. Back then, if you didn't do paid ads, you didn't make no money. We were doing paid ads. We were literally still doing flyers, guys. Remember flyers you physically had to put on people's cars? We were still doing that in 98. And this was the beeper era was phasing out. The cell phones were coming in. This was like when Nokia phones were big because they had the different colors and you could snap on the different faceplate colors. And this is around that time. Beepers were phasing out. If the only people that really still had beepers were like doctors, you know, we had called a 1 800 number and they get, you know, words. I think the sidekicks was probably really popular because that kind of started that whole text era where you just text people you didn't have to talk on the phone I think something like that could make money if it came back I think T-Mobile should bring back the sidekick and have the ability to talk on the phone but have a bigger text on the phone itself because nobody wants to talk on the phone truly now there's so many scams going on with phones now I have to change the subject, but I get a, a, a robocall probably, I would say probably three robocalls every single day. Some of them are legit, you know, somebody, a bill collector trying to get money out of me or whatever, but some of them are just straight up scams and they're getting crafty. They're imitating banks. They're imitating the police department, the fire department. And back to my story, when I started my own brick and mortar store, I realized, why am I not getting any sales? Why is nobody just coming in? Because I couldn't afford advertising. The flyers got very little traction, if any, very little. It worked, but it was like so minute. And I, and I really, back then even, YouTube wasn't even around, I don't think. I forget when YouTube came out, but I'm pretty sure it wasn't out back then. And I think back to those days, and I'll be like, if I simply had YouTube, I would have made tons of money, guys. I probably would have made 
hundreds of thousands of dollars from my location with YouTube alone. Because people like, they like to see you in a physical setting, but the YouTube reaches the masses. Video content reaches the masses. Even a Facebook. I don't even think we had MySpace back then. I don't even remember when MySpace came out. I want to say MySpace came out uh, sometime after that or around then. I don't even remember. But MySpace was the first. But nobody really used it for advertising their business, which they should have. I think it wasn't until YouTube people started using video content to really promote their business. I want to say that's around when it started happening. But I started, I, every now and then I have flashbacks and I think about those days because I, 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 I gave up, let's say I gave up 98 to 2001. But I often think back to those that days if I just had YouTube. I would be able to reach the masses and I would be getting tons of money. So it got me started thinking the same could happen nowadays with a physical location. I'm going to give you an idea. What if you had a private member club but you promoted it on YouTube and you used a faceless channel Meaning you don't even show your face, you literally just show inside the club, club members, and it's only your voice talking about coming to your club, join the club. It would work. YouTube and video content, you could promote any physical business better. It's cheaper than paid ads, and it probably performs better because those people that you're pulling are more likely to buy because they love what you have to offer. But the physical location just puts the icing on the cake because they're able to see you actually performing a real business, the real functions. You're not just sitting in a back room somewhere or a bedroom somewhere telling everybody what you're doing. They're seeing it live. You can start a private member club, design one YouTube channel solely to promote that private member club, and as people join, you gotta let them know we're also a media company and we're gonna we're gonna show these videos. Uh, regardless, put a disclosure agreement or whatever you call them nowadays. Everybody's gotta sign one. That way, and I guarantee you will see more success than paid ads. Way more success than paid ads. Because visual, it attracts more people. I would start a TikTok, I would start Facebook, uh, purely for that business. Facebook. TikTok, Instagram, X if you like that, and of course YouTube. I would do all of them. I'm doing all of them now, but particularly for this private member club. And in this private member club, here's the genius part. In this private member club, you're simply going to teach business owners, only business owners, because what do business owners have? More money. You're gonna teach business owners and some entrepreneurs. You're gonna allow entrepreneurs that are new to come in and learn how to set up a business. But primarily business owners, how to use video content to promote your business. That's gonna be your core product. And you would have a digital product on top of that for the membership. So, for example, their membership fees also would be linked to a digital product where everything you're talking about is on that platform. So, people are getting value for their membership. I would 
do a membership card. For those of you who've been watching my uh, Z Tegrity videos back in the day, Troy Mason, I would do a nice shiny metal card for the membership card, whether they want it to be a debit card or just a regular membership card. I would give them the option to promote the club, it's gonna have the club logo on it, the club address on it. That's gonna promote your club. And that's gonna give people a feeling of family. You know? And I don't think, I think some of the golf clubs should even do this. They should be on YouTube promoting their golf club to high end clients. And I would only promote this to preferably business owners. And then later, once you got credibility, because you got, and you probably could get away with just a few dozen members to make this really blow up online. Once you have enough credibility, because you've got real business owners in the club, it's going to be easy to convert new entrepreneurs. It's going to be like, like that. Because they're already seeing your success. They're seeing you accomplish what you've been talking about. This is the way I believe the evolution of brick and mortar with social media. I believe this is going to change the game. And I have a membership to help you do it. Go to blandrake.com or williamblanding.com. You have a link in the description below. Get signed up to any one of my platforms. The, the partnership coaching program is going to be for the real serious entrepreneurs in Connecticut that want to make this a reality. If you want to promote your golf club, your uh, your veteran your veteran nonprofit club. This is great for nonprofits. Nonprofits can also benefit from video content. This is amazing for nonprofits because people get to see you in action. This is great for webinars. You could do literally one webinar and promote it over and over and over. Not to mention if you do like a long one hour webinar, you cut it into shorts. Now you have more content. You can use Opus Clips, which is also in the description below. Use Opus Clips, cut that hour long webinar into a bunch of, let me use my hands like Trump, hour long webinar and uh, promote that into shorts. Cut that into shorts using Opus Clips. And now you have more video content to put on your channel. Now, me personally, I like both. I like faceless content, and I don't mind me getting behind the counter because I I know it's not about looks. I know it's not about looks because I'm getting views regardless. Maybe not on this channel you're seeing this video on right now, but guaranteed on either one of my platforms or social media platforms, I'm getting views on the same repurposed, repackaged content over and over and over. I've done videos, guys. Matter of fact, I did a video on nonprofit. That nonprofit video still gets views to this day, and I did it probably five years ago. It still gets views to this day. It doesn't get a lot of views. But the fact that it even gets views at all should tell you something. You need to do content. And I've been telling some of you for over and over and over, and you guys just disappear. You're no longer in the, in the comments. You're not watching the videos. Some of you are watching, but you're not, you know, you're kind of like hiding. You're not letting me know you're watching. And you still haven't created content. Well, I don't want to show my face. You don't have to now. I don't know what the video is going to be about. You have AI technology for free.
3, Gemini, uh, Clog, ChatGPT. You can use these tools for free. Just tell them your niche. Uh, let's say your niche is social media. Help me come up with 10 social media ideas for videos for my channel. It's gonna give you titles, it's gonna give you ideas, and it's even gonna give you ideas for thumbnails. This is the era we're in. Gen Z, I hope you're listening. Millennials, I hope you're listening. I'm Generation X. Millennials, Gen Z, I hope you're listening. This is your time. Gen X and baby boomers, it's not too late. It's not too late to promote your company. You could be in the middle of nowhere, and as long as you have an internet connection, promote your business with a cell phone. The time is now. Get started. WilliamBlanding.com, links below. Subscribe, like, comment, please. Hit that thumbs up. And I'm going to see you guys in the next one.